first time ever for the Sooners to to go to Utah to play and um, be our earliest uh, kickoff uh, ever, just a little past 10 o'clock in the morning. So it'll uh, be a, a quick trip and uh, obviously really important. And we haven't played well on the road the last couple of, of outings. And so um, really working on ourselves and the things that we need to do in order to win, uh, give ourselves a chance to win here this week. Um, BYU plays really well uh, at home and um, they're expecting uh, their starting quarterback back here this week along with several other guys that have missed the last few weeks in, in, including uh, uh, freshman running back LJ Martin and uh, a couple of receivers uh, that have missed the last uh, few weeks. They play really aggressive on defense. Their turnover margin uh, has been the best in the Big 12 when they've played at home. And uh, 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 offensively, um, again, they've got good, strong running backs. Uh, I've got a, a left tackle that will, will get drafted early. Um, again, a quarterback that in uh, Slovis that uh, career-wise is just south of 12,000 yards uh, passing and uh, threw for 360 yards against Kansas in a really uh, tight game. They've beaten Arkansas on the road. Uh, got after uh, Cincinnati, beat a, a, a Texas Tech team that um, just a few weeks ago, um, they beat a Texas Tech team that, you know, went down to the wire with Oregon, got after, you know, BYU, uh, had a great game against uh, Kansas State, uh, beat TCU uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and again beat Kansas uh, last week. So, um a little bit kind of like us a year ago and that you know just a little bit of Jekyll and Hyde and, and play you lost a couple of really uh, tough games but uh, you know it's a, a, a place that'll um, you know they'll be full uh, you know that create a lot of noise and a very passionate fan base and tremendous uh, tradition in uh, in college football so uh, we expect their best they've got a really uh, uh, um, again, aggressive defense and uh, Tyler ba Batty, uh, defensive end for them, uh, number 92. He's really had an outstanding year, a very, very disruptive player. And uh, starting corner, uh, number zero, uh, has had four interceptions. And, and like I said, they're very opportunistic at home and um, going to be a, a really good, strong challenge. Really proud of, uh, again, our team, uh, the way they responded after two tough, uh, disappointing losses and uh, played really, re really well uh, offense and defense and and had some adversity on defense. And I liked how we responded in some tough situations. That's really kind of who they've been uh, all season long and uh, a tough, uh, physical, uh, get after it defense that, you know, when their backs are against the wall, they've, they've responded. So uh, we'll need to continue to have a, you know, a tough mindedness about us mentally and physically. Again, going on the road this week, Dylan and uh, Drake, obviously, uh, you know, they were uh, two of our standouts uh, on offense. And uh, congratulations to Dylan for uh, being the Davey O'Brien, you know, national uh, uh, quarterback of the week. And also along with being the, you know, offensive player of the week. And again, Drake, uh, some of the things that, you know, he's been able to do this year uh, for a coach's kid, uh, you know, caveat. Uh, leads the Big 12 in, in uh, receptions and uh, touchdown receptions as well. And uh, again, the last couple of weeks, he, he leads the nation uh, in receptions and uh, in touchdown receptions. Uh, but again, Dylan has, has done outstanding all year. Um, you know, in total offense, uh, 341 yards a game. Uh, has passed for a little over 300 uh, yards a game, 36 touchdown uh, uh both running and throwing and completing a little over 70% of his passes. And so uh, really, I don't, I would be, I, I don't send out a whole lot of, uh, you know, great jobs and fist bumps and man hugs. I, uh, I usually look at the flaws and the areas that we're, we're weak and where we need to be better. Certainly um, uh, that's who I am, but I, I would like to just recognize, you know, uh, Dylan becoming, you know, a top 10 player in FBS history. Uh, as well in several categories. That's a that's a big deal, and um, I said it on my radio show, you know, last night. 
you know, this is a place that's represented um, a lot of offensive superlatives, justifiably so, uh, in college football history. Uh, we've been, there's been a bunch of good ones, uh, to say the least, and uh, Dylan ranks right there alongside those guys. So uh, Dylan will be the first one to tell you that it takes, you know, it takes everybody. And, uh, you know, an offense and a defense getting them the ball back and a, a play caller that every once in a while uh, puts them in a good position. And uh, we're able to, and then every once in a while, overcoming some of the offensive uh, play calling. Just tongue in cheek there. Uh, there ain't no throwing nobody under the bus or anything else. Um, just trying to have some fun along with recognizing, you know, some excellence that uh, the achievements that a couple of our players. Uh, you know, have done in the middle of the season. And uh, and those are guys that are incredibly hungry, uh, certainly far from satisfied, uh, rather embarrassed uh, when I bring it up in front of the team and uh, more determined now than ever to, you know, to, uh, to, to finish the right way. And, and that's, again, what, uh, to me, what, what we've been able to overcome uh, the last several months, uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, defining, you know, this team, Team 129, by by how we finish. So great, great challenge for us. Really excited about um, these just the next several days here. We got a quick turnaround and a very unique uh, short week uh, where we have to manage all of that really, really well here uh, to be able to, you know, playing three games in a little more than 12 days. Uh, you know, managing all that, but uh, uh, we do have a good. A competitive uh, depth that I think will will help make a difference for us as well. Okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> Gosh, Brent, this is off the grid right out of the, right out of the, off the bat. But um, your profession has an element of madness to it. Uh, you there were two coaches co competed against each other over the weekend in a game. Neither had a job Monday. Mississippi State and uh, the other guy. Excellent. And thank you, Dana. Do you stop to consider the danger of what you what you do, the, the machinery, the whether it's money or expectations, or is that less than two years in, is are the the pros outweigh all of that silliness and madness? And I I've um, I, I never have. Um, um, I feel well, and let me let me just say that I don't. I'm not a. Um, I don't worry uh, by nature at all. I just get really busy in the doing, and but I've shown up on my job every day that I've had a job, starting from the first day I was hired as a graduate assistant at Kansas State, showing up that my job is on the line, and everybody else's job's on the line based on my work, my attitude, uh, my thoroughness. Um, I've always had that sense of urgency, but never out of fear. Um, just as something that uh, I think it comes from just an appreciation for having what I have. And so I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm confident in who I am and whose I am. And, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about things that I can't control. Real quick, the other thing is, I mean, what are the, why do it just in general? I mean, why do what? Coach, I mean, what what are the what are the obvious pros that outweigh that stuff? No, um, golly, man, this is yeah, that's a long list. But uh, what when you 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 love what you do, uh, you're passionate about what you do. Um, like all jobs, you know, all professions, uh, there's challenges, but it's all worth it. And um, you're making an impact. You're bringing joy. You're bringing out the best in people. Uh, you're creating lifelong habits. You're helping these young guys and coaches and staff take advantage and use the game um, and all the amazing transferable skills to be better human beings, to be better uh, coaches, to be better husbands, to be better fathers, to uh, be better competitors, uh, you know, to help facilitate these young guys. I got a locker room of 123 guys and be able to be a, a part of helping facilitate their dreams. And you know that that they know, and then maybe the other passions beyond the game that they don't know yet. You're helping become a, a vessel for them to uh, connect, um, use the game to connect, uh, and you know give back to the game that's been so good uh, to to all of us. So um, I love coaching. Uh, it's a way for me to compete. 
um, with myself. And uh, but I, I love bringing out the best in people. And uh, I, but but I love watching our players become grown and confident, uh, strong men through the game. Thanks. Mm hmm. Hey, Brent, wanted to ask you about uh, Gavin Sachak, a guy who's found his footing the last few weeks. Maybe just how have you seen him maybe grow and, and respond to that, that early injury, and, and how important has his play the last few weeks been for the offense in terms of consistency and, and things like well, that? Well, I, I do think that there's something to um, getting in a groove, if you will. Um, I don't know what that's like. Um, if I'm trying to get a linebacker in their groove, I'll just blitz him in the A gap and uh, usually disrupt something. I think running back's a little bit different than that, and there's a timing aspect, there's a practice aspect, an element that's important, uh, getting hit and the timing and how, to, how blocks move and things of that nature. Again, I just, um, you asked the question, so I'm kind of thinking through it, but I think all of that is an important. And then, um, again, I think surround, the players surrounding them are a big part of it too, but uh, so battling back from, you know, kind of a nagging injury and getting in the flow. And it's not easy because as a coach, you're trying to find out who's most ready right now in this moment. And there's one running back on the field at a time. So having some patience along the way uh, for Gavin, you know, he's got a great support system, amazing family. And, uh, you know, DeMarco uh, does a good job of holding guys accountable and letting them know. Most, most of the time, I think they know exactly where they stand and what maybe they need to work on. So, uh, but good for him from a from a maturity standpoint and being prepared for his opportunity and then hanging in there and, and getting a little bit better you know the more that he's played mm -hmm. yeah brent just wanted to ask about a few uh freshmen we got to see sammy and at the cheetah jacoby made the pick those two and lewis carter and what they've done on special teams the entire season the way that they've embraced that that's what their role is yeah and then there's several others that Peyton Bowen has been a, a, another one along with them, freshmen that have really uh, excelled in the special teams and have done a nice job when they've gotten in. I think that's a, an important uh, part of their, their growth and maturity. Certainly that's the challenge day one that we give uh, the freshmen. If you want to establish yourself, you find a way to bring value to the team. You know, you in order to, to make the... Uh, the roster for a travel, uh, uh, an away game, you got to be able to be a, a dude on special teams. And um, so uh, it starts with attitude and then being a detailed guy and then having a bad case of the wants, man. That's what it's all about. Showing up every day with gratefulness and uh, because you, you've got very limited time. Special teams, uh, they don't get as much time, you know, to work on their craft. So in the small windows that you have every day, you've got to do a great job, show that you're accountable and reliable, dependable, and that you like what you're doing. That shows uh, tremendously, you know, in special teams and then being coachable, just like you are at your position. So I think it really help, helps uh, expedite their growth and maturity uh, to becoming more reliable, accountable players as well. There's a direct correlation, you know, between those. And then as coaches, you're like, boy, every time he gets in, look what he does. And that's what RJ uh, did. Uh, and he did it last year. And so we would, you want to find as many opportunities as you can to affirm guys that are, are really good role players. They only get 12 additional snaps, but look what they did. Look at the production. Look at the grade. Look at the, um, you know, again, the work that they put on the field, the strain, and look how it affected the field position in the game. We had a short field all day. Whatever that is, you want to affirm them um, both personally and then certainly in front of the team and trying to create buy-in from everybody uh, that way. But those guys have really shown that they're going to be excellent players um, both now and in the future. Brent, you mentioned the coach's kids before. You were on the other side of the country in 2017, 2018, but coaches stay connected, families stay connected. What did you know about Drake Stoops, the three-star recruit Same who thing. came here as a walk-on? Well, we, me and my boys, we'd always be watching, and if there was something on Twitter or something, we would share with each other. Just, just a baller, you know, just always doing, you know, the little things right. And like, oh, man, you know, that was a nice little play he had there. Uh, whether he's cracking somebody uh, to set up a big run or a screen play or, you know, making, you know, the third down catch or, you know, making the ordinary, the, the, uh, the extraordinary 
catch may look ordinary and then you know his his ability to to run after the catch is different you know he he bounces off of guys he breaks a lot of tackles he runs through trash uh can make guys miss in a in a phone booth and uh and then his his toughness and grit that he represents man that's what you want your whole program what program doesn't want to represent that you know have people players uh, that represent that and and he's been the model of consistency on top of that and you know he uh, commented you know in an interview about being up here 10 hours a day he, he's he's not joking he's working on his body he's watching extra film you know he's building relationships with his teammates he loves all of it and um, he's exhausting this moment in his life and I love that as opposed to being hurt, you know, hurry up to get on to the next thing like everybody else tries to get you to do to chase the bag and to be self-centered. He's like, no, I've got college is too fun. I've got a lot of developing still to do. I can always get better. The one shot that I might have to make the NFL the best league on the planet, I'm going to be as prepared as I can possibly be. There are no mulligans. You don't get it. Well, let me try this again and see if I can get drafted again or make a team again. You get one chance. So make the most of, of college, uh, which, as we all know, is the most transformational time of your life. Uh, it should, um, through relationships, through experiences, through education, uh, you know, it's going to be one of the most enriching times of your life and really help propel you for the rest of your life. So he's got wisdom beyond um, his, his years. Um, he certainly have a, has a great uh, network of people that have um, helped him. He's not one uh, that's shy about asking others' opinion, but he's a strong young man and uh, that's made a, made a decision to be excellent at what he does and value all the opportunities that he's had. Uh, not everybody's like that. You know, a lot of people get the opportunity, but not everybody takes advantage of it and has the kind of uh, toughness and determination that a guy like, like Drake Stoops has. And he's had to overcome a lot, too. Uh, one being a coach's kid, right? He walked on, uh, and, uh, but he never, he never was bitter about, you know, the things that he's had to overcome. And some people, he, he's, he's allowed his name and his opportunity to be a blessing as opposed to uh, block his own blessing. You know, because oh no, I, you know, I'm mad at everybody. He's not, he hadn't been that way. He just he's like oh, you know, I can have an opportunity to to do this. I, I'm gonna show you. And when he it's time to compete, he loves to compete, and he don't care who it's against. Uh, but he's a great, great teammate. Just an amazing teammate. Uh, you know, and I told him, I said, when you're done with football, when this amazing game is done, man, you're going to have a line of people from here to Padre Island ready to hire you because what you bring to, to any environment is excellence. And uh, you'll figure it out, whatever it is, if it's coaching, if it's oil and gas, if it's, uh, you know, financials, whatever it is, you know, he's going to be, be really, really good. So just, you know, I wanted to uh, recognize him in front of the, the team here uh, recently because I don't want to wait to the funeral to give him flowers or the end of the, you know, the banquet, you know, you know, in the middle of it, I want, I want guys to have an appreciation and I hope, hopefully, you know, you've planted a few seeds like, man, I can be like that. That's a choice. And uh, so um, he's been, he's been amazing, you know, Oklahoma, uh, has um, uh, been a benefactor uh, of having Drake Stoops uh, in that locker room. Uh, and Drake, Drake will be the first one to tell you that this place has been amazing to him, but I, I look at it the other way. Oklahoma is, 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 was lucky to have a guy like Drake Stoops uh, you know, be a part of this program. You know, Brent, when you talked about Jackson Arnold the other day that you might be able to register, that was a little bit of a change of plan, but talk about you know his development well, yeah, this year. And, and, that, and, I, and a lot of that is the course of the season and how things have gone, and, and you're always trying to be mindful of that of every player, and sometimes you can um, potentially, uh, you know, do it, and then sometimes you, hey, that was the plan, and then there's disaster uh, happens, and then you got to make a hard right-hand turn, and... So, you know, you're always looking at plan A, plan B, and best case scenario, worst case scenario. Uh, but he's still been able to take all the, you know, uh, you know, the reps um, just in case, you know, uh, something unforeseen happens. And so, to, so he can stay ready. He's had tremendous growth and maturity. Uh, you know, we give him a ton of reps. We do a lot of good on good. And, uh, you know, we don't hold back, oh, okay, well, Jackson's in, let's, let's make it easy on him. That's not what we do. 
Um, we don't make it harder. We just do what we do, and uh, and it's all hard. And uh, but he's responded. He has a wonderful attitude uh, about all of it. You know, he sees the growth in himself. Uh, tremendous, tremendous growth and maturity, both as a young person and then uh, as a as a leader and as a football player. Uh, so, I, I, you know, Jeff has done a great job having uh, him in a great mindset and uh, and having him continue to, to work and stay hungry and driven. And so he doesn't spend any less time, you know, here. Uh, he spends, you know, uh, a lot of extra time uh, staying ready and just continue to develop himself. Mm-hmm. Get the chill bump. Anybody else have the chill bumps? It's okay to admit that, right? Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Really cool. Congratulations, Drake. BYU has a unique history, and you know, as a college football fan growing up, do you remember what Coach Edwards did in, in introducing the passing game to college football like they did? And then also, to another second part of the question, I want to ask you about the 2009 game. What do you remember about that season opener in Arlington? Well, yeah, I mean, Coach uh, Edwards, obviously, um, he's a, a legend and a Hall of Famer, and uh, he won. That's what I remember. <laughs> he won a lot, and he did it with great quarterback play and, and uh, a great culture, and uh, that game is obviously it's a, it's a really good game uh, despite having some guys injured uh, both before the game and during the game. Uh, big physical mature football team you know that you're gonna have to be ready to have it strapped up uh, they're gonna bring it they're gonna play with passion and physical toughness mental toughness and uh, they're gonna fight for four hours and uh, so uh, nothing's gonna come easy that's what I remember yeah Brent uh, obviously you never want to be in those situations but the, the goal line stands that y'all have been able to uh, pull off pretty consistently one have you ever been a part of a team that could has handled it that way as consistently as y'all have this year? And two, is there something beyond just want to and, and execution of the plan that's helping y'all, uh, you know, do that? Well, I mean, I th yeah, it takes belief and toughness, and our guys have that, and uh, uh, you know, an unshakable belief. And I'm like. Great job, guys, and uh, you know. Uh, but the, uh, I try to promote the will's got to be stronger than the skill. Uh, when you have that, you have a chance to be a great football player. Uh, we do have some skill too, um, but I love the I love the toughness and the belief that I see. Uh, it's not just on the goal line. We've been a much different football team uh, in two point plays. I think we've defended one. I think one out of six have been converted on us. Another. All right, here it is, one play. Let's go. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I love that. I think it takes the same things there. Um, uh, several turnover on downs. Again, last week had to muff punt. And again, it's still a uh, very re, you know competitive game. And you now three plays, we stop them right there. Um, I, I have been a part of you know a couple of teams that have had that same kind of grit and toughness and belief. And uh, you know, you know it when you see it. You know it when you don't. This guys, these guys have proven it, and that's to me. I said, well, I know this is what we're capable of. But what are y'all willing to do? And in these moments, this is this is going to bring out either the best or the worst in in, in players and teams and units. And our guys have, uh, man, they, they've been amazing. They really have. Brent, this is the time of year people start looking at trying to figure out who's going to finish where in the Big 12. You guys are likely in some sort of tiebreaker scenario if you went out. What do you know of the Big 12 tiebreaker scenarios? How much are you, are you like the rest of us trying to figure out no. where <laughs> things fall? I just know I'm <laughs> trying to go uh, win this week. That's it. And that's not, literally that's, that's where I can utilize the time that I have uh, the best way uh, to be, uh, you know, obviously everything starts and goes through me, but as the head coach, but what do we got to do to win this week? And then what is the turnaround, you know, on a short week look by next week to get these guys ready to play against TCU, you know, on that following Friday, everything else falls, uh, takes care of itself. You know, we put ourselves uh, in a, in a tough position. You know, that's what I know. We don't control our own destiny. 
And uh, but let's focus on the finish. Let's focus on this week. Uh, let's focus on you know the details of and the DNA of this opponent. And because uh, you don't have unlimited time, and uh, you got limited resources, limited time, and uh, and so that's where uh, I don't even ask. I'm not even asking Mike. Hey, what does it look like? You know, and have him figure it out. I, I don't. To me, I, I don't care right now. I'm I'm really not. Because of if you make the title game, it is a quick turnaround. You've got to go right back into a game week planning mode. Is there anybody on your staff that has to keep aware of that just from a planning standpoint? Well, I mean, uh, Jacob Maloney, uh, you know, from an operation standpoint, um, he doesn't. He hadn't asked me nothing about it yet. Uh, he knows better. Uh, he, he makes me mad a lot. Uh, not really, uh, but he knows that would really piss me off. And uh, so. I'm sure there's some logistical things that, you know, uh, have to, obviously there are, but, uh, you know, the only other thing is, you know, guys that, uh, you know, there's support staff that uh, we get down to the wire, you know, going into the last week, I'm sure we'll have a plan to, you know, look at some people maybe that we, if if they make it, and we were fortunate enough to make it, uh, you know, uh, next week while we're working on uh, TCU, they would, you know, be just like every staff, you know, that, that's in that situation. They would do some advanced work, uh, you know, guys that don't coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brent, uh, this time of year, the coaching carousel always starts to, to heat up. I'm sure you have guys on your staff that aspire to be head coaches someday or, or coordinators. As someone that's been through that process, what's maybe your advice to them as someone that's, you know, waited for the right time. Yeah, right there's time. there's a time for everything. You know, be committed to where your feet are. You ask your players to do that, then you do the same. That's what I would say. Uh, you know, don't be a vagabond coach. Build something. Have a have you know stand for something. You know, have some roots somewhere. Uh, be loyal uh, to the players and the people that gave you your opportunity. And and this will be a game and a, a career and a profession that will that will honor that in the long haul. And, um, you know, just like, you know, you tell your team every year, you know, you got goals and you got, you know, expectations and you try to create vision, you know, how do you get to the, to the top of that mountain? One step at a time. There ain't no shortcuts. Uh, but I don't know. It's just yeah, everybody's different, you know, but for me, I've, all, I've always, I want to, uh, you know, I want to go somewhere and call somewhere home. And I would think that every, who wouldn't want that? You know, a stable environment where you got great support, you got great players, uh, you're in a wonderful day-to-day -day environment. Don't screw it up. Don't screw up happy. And uh, even if it's for a little more money or a little, another title. That's how I've always looked at it. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not uh, contradicting, you know, my actions, you know, for over 30 years. And uh, um, so that's what I, you know, we're not having those conversations right now, but we talk about that a lot uh, in the out of season. And uh, you're talking about philosophy and uh, values and standards and expectations. Uh, you know, that's what, you know, I would say. Do you think you have any head coaches on, future head coaches? Oh, on? sure, without question. Do you take no that as a compliment when I guess part of your staff comes up in those conversations? Yeah, I mean, I don't spend a whole lot of time on it, you know, but I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, you know. But it, you know, I know we have excellent coaches. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Um, you know, all of them have had opportunity, uh, both while they've been here and, and uh, prior to coming here. And uh, so. Oh, that wouldn't shock me about opportunities here down the road, things that you have to deal with that are part of being in this position, too. Mm -hmm. Second row far right, Joe Masato. Yeah, Brent. Um, you, you've coached against BYU twice, once at K-State, once here, but correct me if I'm wrong, never coached in Provo, a, a, a game out there. Mm -hmm. um, with as many places as you've been, stadiums and everything, are you able to sort of kind of Appreciate going to a new place and you know having a, a memory you haven't had before at a new stadium. Yeah, for sure, there. absolutely. And again, it's uh, you know an incredibly tradition-rich program has been for such a long time, and 
have one of the most loyal and passionate fan bases in all of college football. Uh, all the college football history excellence that's represented uh, players and coaches and wins at, at BYU. We've always seen the picture probably that if you're if you like college football, you know there's the picture of the stadium down in you know nestled in the mountains in the valley there and it looks pretty cool. And uh, uh, so it'd be fun to go uh, compete. I got again incredible uh, respect, uh, you know, for for their program and. Uh, you know, uh, for Coach Sataki and now what he's been able to do, and uh, uh, and again the passion uh, that, and the loyalty that the fan base has is second to none. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ran on the 2009 game down mm-hmm. at Cherry World. What do you remember about that night? Again, just the physicality, um, the, the maturity of the team, uh, the size, um, certainly. Uh, the injury, the toughness that our players fought with, both teams fought with. I think it was a one, was a one point game, and uh, you know, literally a game of inches. And uh, but I remember our team didn't flinch. You know, when you we lost, that was pretty devastating. Uh, and our guys responded. We had I think three losses that year by one point. Uh, we went to Miami and lost 21-20. Somebody else maybe. Uh, in that season, but kind of started the season off uh, in a rough way. But man, it was one of my favorite years in coaching. Uh, I mean, again, it's one of those seasons where it was all about what we had to overcome. And uh, we didn't win a quote unquote championship. I think we beat Stanford in the bowl game uh, that year with uh, Toby Gerhardt. I think their quarterback was out. And, uh, but, uh, you know, that was kind of a, a year where it was just you had to overcome a lot, and uh, but our guys fought. You know that's what I remember about that team, and and they had fun fighting. You know we grew in, in two different ways to look at it. You know, man goes behind bars, and some some see mud and some see the stars. It's you know to me it's a choice and. Uh, uh, circumstances you can't change them, but your perspective can. I, I remember that year just being a year where we had to overcome a lot and just have a. We had a lot of fun, you know, building that team and uh, developing an identity. Stay over here, John Hoover. Yeah, Brent. I wanted to ask a, a follow up on uh, Jackson. Kind of a two part question. Um, knowing that next year's team is going to be playing in the SEC, right? How? What's been the level of interest in getting him? prepared to, for that kind of action and then looking back on the four games that he has played where he was a short yardage quarterback for three of those I think was there is there any second guessing on that like you wish you would run the full package with him or anything like that I don't think we have any regret and and I don't think we do anything different to develop him I think you just you have a process in how you develop and coach and bring him along help him mature and uh, everything again has its time, you know. We're uh, we're not good enough to to look ahead like that, you know. So he's got to be prepared at each and every week to play the schedule uh, that we have right now, and because uh, he still is our our backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brent. Um, kind of follow up on the quarterback spot, and, and you brag rightfully so, Dylan, at the beginning of the press conference. Is there any scenario where Dylan comes back next year for you? I mean, I don't, I don't know. We, we haven't had those conversations. Uh, he's played a long time. He's been through a lot, and uh, I think a year ago maybe uh, the talk was, you know, he had a he had a good year. You know, why would you want to come back? You know, uh, you could come back and have a bad year, but what's he done? You know, he's come back and have an even better year, but. Uh, I don't know. He's played a lot of football, a lot of college football, and he's like I said, he's had to overcome some injuries, lots of uh, different types of ailments and injuries, and uh, uh, we haven't talked about that though. Okay, third row on the right, Cliff Brown. Yeah. So, Coach, one of the most significant parts of BYU's home field advantage is the fact that the stadium is 4,600 feet above sea level. Um, is there anything that you can do to prepare for that, or does that change anything that you do? I just, I mean, I, it's going to be cooler uh, when we play. 
and uh, our biggest thing is making sure that we, we get these guys um, physically and mentally uh, in the right place uh, on a week you're going to fly for three hours and uh, and you're going to be in a different altitude uh, with dryer. So making sure that we do a great job for my hydration, sleep, uh, nutrition, uh, taking care of their legs here this week, things of that nature. Uh, that's where really our focus has been. Brent, there's kind of a growing unrest in the fan base that maybe you guys aren't getting any calls or they're not calling games correctly uh, because you guys are leaving the conference. I'm, I'm curious, does that you worry about that filtering into your players at all? Do you address that with them about you got to expect maybe the calls aren't going to be made against you? No, I just, uh, you know, I say I don't believe in conspiracies. That's what I tell them. I'm not going. I'm not going to give them an excuse. I'm not going. I'm going to. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna let anybody else give them excuses either. You know, so the the opportunity that I have around them, um, uh, you know, my challenge is is um, to not put it in anybody else's hands. Play clean, uh, do the little things right. Sometimes it's gonna go for you. Sometimes it's not. Keep playing. Keep fighting. Keep working. Keep believing. Don't get distracted. Uh, so we can't we can't live in that world and and be our best. Did you have the other night? You have the crowd chanting SEC. Uh, you know, you have the skirmish in the end zone. Did you feel like any of that led to it? I, mean, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I think that, uh, the game the other night was a very intense and passionate, physical football game, and I think that's, you know, the play on the field got everybody fired up, and um, but the players were just going at it, you know, just competing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Y'all have a good day. Appreciate it.